Welcome to Math with Miss P. <laughs> I feel like I should have something that I say that's better, but watch my little intro video. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. We are making tables with linear functions. Okay, how to make a table with linear functions. Well, number one, you want to plug in given x values. So whatever x values they give you, you're going to plug those in. Number two is solve for y. Number three is name ordered pairs. Number four is graph them ordered pairs. Okay, so in example number one, I have negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Those are kind of like our favorite x values, but it doesn't have to be limited to those. So I'm going to take my function, which is y equals 2x plus 3. And instead of x, I'm going to use negative 2. We're going to use PEMDAS, so first multiplication, negative 4 plus 3. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to get negative 1. So, boom, negative 2 goes with negative 1. That's my ordered pair, negative 2 comma negative 1. I'm going to do the same thing for the next x value. So negative 1 goes in instead of x. We do multiplication first. So 2 times negative 1 equals negative 2 plus the 3. y equals 1. So next to the negative 1 in the table, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a 1. y equals 2 times 0 because 0 is the next x value that we're going to use. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3. equals 3 so 0 goes with 3 I drew that little line just to separate a little bit so we don't get too chaotic on the screen okay so y time y equals 2 times 1 because 1 is the next x value two, uh, 2 times 1 is 2 2 plus 3 is 5 and our last x value that we're gonna plug in is the last empty value on the table which is 2 so I'm gonna go y equals 2 times 2 plus 3 2 times 2 is positive 4 positive 4 plus 3 is 7 boom baby okay an easy way to check if you're right is to check um, negative 1 to 1 is 2 spaces 1 to 3 is 2 spaces 3 to 5 is 2 spaces 5 to 7 is 2 spaces if they're all the same you know you did it right that's just a side note that was for free all right, let's graph this. So the first ordered pair is negative two comma one. So starting from the origin, we're gonna go over two spaces and down one space. And then the next point is negative one comma one. So down, ne a little bit up, over negative one, up one. Zero, three, I'm not gonna go left or right because my x value is zero. So I'm just gonna go up three spaces. And then one comma five, I'm gonna go to the right one space, up five spaces. And then last but not least, we're gonna start from the origin. We're gonna go over two spaces and we're gonna go up seven spaces. And that, ladies and gentlemen, makes a beautifully straight line. Yes. That's what we like to see. On your paper, use a ruler. Okay, example number two out of six so it's not that many all right we use the same x values negative two negative one zero one two i told you those are like math teachers favorite values so we're going to plug in negative two for x before you get all hot and bothered about the stinking fraction just think to yourself what is half of two half of two is one what's a negative times a negative a positive one so positive one minus two you see that was not that bad. One minus two is negative one. Guess what goes in the, yes. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm plugging negative one, okay? What's half of one? 0.5 negative times negative. Good, half minus two, negative 1.5. We'll put that in the table. Okay, so now we're gonna do a half times zero. Anything times zero is? Zero. Zero minus two is negative two. Guess what goes in the table? Negative two. Draw my little line so we don't get chaotic, so it's nice and organized. So y equals negative one half 
uh, times one, anything times one is itself, right? So it's, that's negative a half minus two. Um, both of those numbers are negative, so negative one half minus two just makes a bigger negative, right? So negative two and a half, or negative 2.5. That's gonna go in the table. Y equals negative one half times two. Again, what's half of two? Half of two is one. A negative times a positive is a negative. So negative one minus two gives me negative three. That's my last number that goes into the table. Okay, the easy way to check yourself to see if you did right is to see if the purple numbers are evenly spaced. So to get from negative one to negative 1.5, that's 0.5. To get from negative 0.5 to negative two, that's another 0.5. To get from negative two to negative 2.5, that's 0.5. To get from negative 2.5 to three, that's negative 0.5. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it's fine. Anyway, <laughs> it's just free knowledge for you. Okay, so now that I have those, I'm gonna plot my points on a table. So we start at the origin, and I'm gonna go left two spaces, and I'm gonna go down one space. And then point number two, I'm gonna go left one space. I'm gonna go down 1.5 spaces. Notice 1.5 is in between one and neg negative one and negative two. So then we're gonna go zero. So I'm not going left, I'm not going right, but I am gonna go down two spaces and we're gonna do one. And we're gonna go down 2.5 spaces. And then last but not least, starting from the origin, we are going to go right two spaces, down three spaces yes that's our line we love to see it mm -hmm. that was example number two out of six okay wow our equation has changed <gasps> we are now in standard form not in slope intercept form so that's gonna complicate my life a little bit but look, we use this, we're using the same X values. Look at us. Anyway, I told you, math, te math teacher's favorite X values. Okay, so we're plugging in negative two in for X. Because remember, those are all X values, honey. Okay, so negative two in for X and negative two times negative two is gonna give me positive four plus three Y equals 13. I gotta get rid of negative four, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, actually. Um, it's a little out of order in this little slide. That's unfortunate. It's fine. I think when you see the video, you won't even be able to tell. <laughs> okay, so when we are isolating Y, um, we're going to get approximately 3.6 for that second one. We're plugging in zero now. Zero times negative two. I don't need to subtract zero, but just for the sake of consistency, I like to do it. Divide by three, 13 divided by three, y equals 13 thirds, which is approximately 4.3. It was too much space on that one slide, so I have to continue on another slide. I'm plugging in one now. Three y equals 15. What is y equal? y equals 5. Um, so now I'm plugging in the last number, which is positive 2. So we're going to get negative 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3y equals 13. 3y equals 17 y equals 17 over 3 which is approximately 5.6 and so now i have all five of my values baby okay now that i have all of my values i'm gonna plot them on a graph we start from the origin oh i didn't even start from the origin i just plotted the points oop Negative two comma three, negative one comma three point six, zero comma four point three, one comma five, and two comma five point six. Swoop, there's my line. Okay, example number four, so we're halfway done. 
same x values. Plugging in negative 2. Negative 2 minus y equals 5. Add 2 to both sides. Negative y equals 7. Divide by negative 1. Don't forget about that negative in front of the y. Y'all like to do that sometimes. y equals negative 1. I mean negative 7. Blah, 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 blah. My brain is jumbled. Sorry. <laughs> I wake myself up. Okay, so now I'm going to do negative 1 minus y equals 5. So we're going to plus 1 on both sides. So negative y equals 6. So neg divide by negative 1, y equals negative 6. Um, so that goes in my table. Next, we're going to do 0 minus y equals 5. So minus 0. I don't have to subtract 0, but just for the sake of consistency, I do it. So we're going to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, y equals negative 5. So we have two more x values that we want to plug in. So 1 minus 5. Subtract 1 from both sides. Negative y equals 4. Divide by negative 1. y equals negative 4. And last, but not least, is this 2 that we're about to plug in here. 2 minus y equals 5. <laughs> Minus 2 on both sides, negative y equals 3, but I have to divide by a negative. So y equals negative 3. Yes! Alright, now that I have my 5 points, I'm going to plot them on the graph. Negative 2 comma negative 7. Boom. There she goes. Negative 1 comma negative 6. Boom. 0 comma negative 5, boom! 1 comma negative 4, boom! Sorry. <laughs> 2 comma 3. I'm a mess. I'm aware. There's my line. Yay! Okay, two more examples. We got this! Same x values. We, at least we're consistent, you know? Plugging in negative 2. Our equation looks a little funny this time. I think it's in point slope form. Anyway, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Add 1 to both sides to get y by itself, because remember, that's what we're doing. We're isolating y. And so y is 1. y minus 1 equals negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Add 1 to both sides. y equals 2. Hey! y minus 1 equals 0 plus 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. Plus 1 on both sides. y equals 3. Do you see the consistency? 1, 2, 3. Guess what the next two numbers are going to be? Listen, this is why we like linear functions. Because you can already guess that the next one is going to be 4 and the next one is going to be 5. Because they follow a consistent pattern. Like, I'm going to get too hyped, but I'm going to finish the work for you guys, even though I told you the secret. Okay? So, 3 plus 1 is 4. But we knew that already. What's the next one going to be? I went from 1, 2, 3, 4. What's the next one going to be? It has to be 5. But you know what? We're going to do the work anyway, just to prove to ourselves that we're doing it right. <gasps> hey, look at us. We did that. That's a 5. But we knew that already. Yes, we did. Okay, so now we're gonna plot some points. Okay, negative two comma one, shoop. Negative one comma two, shoop. Zero comma three, shoop. One comma four, shoop. Two comma five, shoop. Oh, we love to see it. We absolutely love to see it. Look at y'all, y'all making tables. Y'all making tables out here. All right. Um, last but not least, example number six. We're going to plug in negative two minus two. Negative two minus two is negative four. What's half of four, guys? Don't let the fraction freak you out. What's half of four? Half of four is two. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So positive two. We're going to go ahead and subtract three from both sides. Y equals negative one. Boom! Um, let me write a little note to myself. 
Okay, so now we're plugging in negative one into the equation. And so I get half of three, half of three is 1.5 or one and a half uh, positive because negative times negative is a positive. So we're gonna subtract three from both sides. We're gonna get y equals negative 1.5. Yes, yes honey, sorry. Um, <laughs> we're plugging zero now, I'm plugging zero. I'm gonna get zero minus two, which is negative two. What is half of two? It's one, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So y'all, remember what's the secret sauce here? Look at my pattern. I'm going from negative one to negative 1.5 to negative two. Guess what the next number is gonna be, right? If it's following the same pattern, negative one to negative 1.5, negative 1.5 to negative two, what's the next number have to be? It has to be negative 2.5, right? but I'm going to keep doing it because just to prove to ourselves. Oop, negative 2.5, what did I, what I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? So now guess what's gonna be the next number if it follows the pattern, negative one to negative 1.5 to negative two to negative 2.5. What does that last number have to be? Think about it. If it's following a pattern, y'all know already. It has to be negative three, right? <gasps> That's crazy! I told y'all a shortcut, okay? I told y'all a shortcut. Don't tell your teacher I told you that. <laughs> okay, and if you notice, that was like example number four or something like that also, or maybe example number two, but we did this example already in a different version of the line, but it's fine. Oh, look, I even graphed the points for you guys from the origin. Look how, look how smooth. Just look how smooth. Two, go over two spaces, go down three spaces, shoop. Now you know how to graph lines from making tables. Good job, guys. I always like to tell you guys to go back through the video See if you could do them without my help. Because I know how to do math. We wanna know if you know how to do math. Have a wonderful day guys, and I'll see you in the next one.